Hey, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and today we're going to talk about how to diagnose diabetes. Let's first start off by discussing what is diabetes. Diabetes is when the body is unable to regulate levels of sugar or glucose, causing the glucose levels to go sky high. The complications of diabetes include microvascular and macrovascular complications. These include coronary artery disease, peripheral arterial disease, kidney failure, retinopathy, and neuropathy. Now, why does the body lose control of serum glucose? Well, remember, the pancreatic beta cells are responsible for producing insulin. Insulin causes a decrease in serum glucose. So there are generally two causes to diabetes, either low insulin production or increased insulin resistance. In type 1 diabetes, an autoimmune response occurs where the body attacks the pancreatic insulin-producing beta cells. In doing so, the body is unable to produce an adequate amount of insulin. We can test for this autoimmune response by testing for particular antibodies. These antibodies include anti-glutamic acid decarboxylase, anti-islet cell autoantigen, and anti-insulin antibodies. Surprisingly, these antibodies have also been shown in type 2 diabetes, indicating that with long-standing type 2 diabetes, there may be an underlying autoimmune process. Type 2 diabetes occurs due to insulin resistance. So as a society, we love our fast food and fatty foods, me included. As our intake of carbs and sugar increases, our body tries to regulate the elevated sugars, so our body produces tons and tons of insulin. After some time, the body becomes desensitized to the high levels of insulin, and the body has to produce more to achieve the same effects. This cycle continues, producing a relative insulin deficiency due to insulin resistance. With weight loss and a better diet, the insulin resistance can improve. So how do we diagnose diabetes? Well, the diagnosis of diabetes is based on symptoms and lab work. It's important to take a history to identify symptoms of hyperglycemia like polyuria, polydipsia, vision, blurriness or changes, fatigue, and abdominal pain. Polyuria means having excessive urination. It's due to glucose being spilled into the urine, pulling water with it. Polydipsia means having an excessive thirst. And this is the body's way of trying to regain that water loss due to the glucose pulling water into the urine. In terms of lab work, the diagnosis of diabetes can be established if random glucose is 200 or greater with hyperglycemic symptoms. In addition, a fasting plasma glucose of 126 or greater, a two-hour post-glucose challenge of 200 or greater, or a hemoglobin A1c of 6.5 or greater is diagnostic of diabetes. If a lab work meets the criteria, it needs to be repeated for confirmation. In addition, there are two high-risk groups for developing diabetes. These include impaired fasting glucose and impaired glucose tolerance. Impaired fasting glucose is defined by a fasting plasma glucose of 100 to 125. Impaired glucose tolerance is defined after a patient has had a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test. If their two hour plasma glucose is 140 to 199, then they have impaired glucose tolerance. Well, that was a brief review of how to diagnose diabetes. In the future, we will talk about treatment and medical management of diabetics. Make sure to share this video on Facebook and Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter at iMedSchool. Follow us on Facebook by searching for our page, iMedicalSchool. And check out our podcast on iTunes, iMedicalSchool. Please like this video, comment, and subscribe. This is Dr. K, and I'll see you next time.